There are, there are a lot of bots, so yes, we didn't kind of go into how that works at the background, but it's, um, it wouldn't be obvious to one human being unless they happen to have put a watch list, uh, you put that article or all those articles on a watch list and actually kept looking. So you can get an alert to any article that you're really keen about. Um, but there are a lot of um, bots there that will look at everything that's being edited and start you know, flagging things and some of them they will send off to, um, you know, this is in layperson's terms, will send off uh, to human editors who will have a look for themselves and make a decision. Um, there's a whole uh, layer behind around that um, quality checking um, and then there are people whose life is just sitting watching the new edits um, <laughs> stream. But, but yes, that, that's the tension of the whole um, project. But it's, I mean, I remember what I, you, I think both of you said you, what, how you first got into this and I got into it um, when the organisation I was working with um, brought Jimmy Wales out to Australia and I went to his session and I remember his story about you know, that, that trust thing, we go into a restaurant, yes, we could be stabbed by a knife, you know, the, by the person at the table next to us, but it doesn't happen that much, and so we just go, you know, go with it. <laughs> it's the same thing, you know, honestly, most people are there to do, to do the right thing and to improve things, and, you know, yes, there are various reasons, mainly commercial, as to why people don't. I don't know if you want to add yeah. anything. Uh, that's a good answer. I'd, I'd just say that, that was the big fear when Wikipedia started, that people would just vandalise it. I, I think the fact that it is now ubiquitous and relied upon to, to some extent, right? Like we, we all understand that the current version, we might look back in the history or something, but, but I think that fear was fair but has now been in some sense disproven. The generosity of people checking is, has worked. I was saying, in, in my particular project, it's small enough with 992 articles, we actually do have one person who monitors every <laughs> new edit. Okay. And he is absolutely amazing. He's um, blind. A guy sits in Perth and can edit Wikipedia faster than anyone I've ever seen. And he monitors every... Ch so we've had students go in from a student class and we teach them how to use Wikipedia and then they go on and they either update articles or create new articles and almost always they'll get a message from him saying what are you doing <laughs> or you know if they've made what he considers to be an incorrect edit so that human side of it's sitting there pretty powerfully as well have you had destructive um, changes uh, we've had athletes who want who thought that they should be able to put the in wikipedia what the, you know, the story that they wanted to tell um, and then we also have had one area where there's been a controversial athlete where people have come in and tried to um, turn the article into a debating forum um, and that article had to be locked down um, but generally speaking as Toby said and, and as Bruce said you know people generally want to do the right thing and very very rarely and there are more and more robust ways of, of, of dealing with it Okay, we had a question at the back and then we had two questions at the front. So question at the back, then we'll have the two questions at the front. I'm afraid I'm a bit green, I have two questions. Well, <laughs> can you make two quick questions? Quick. Um, hopefully they're quick answers. Um, I was interested in the workshops that you were running. Um, what was sort of achievable in that workshop? Were the participants trained up and they did in their own time or were they actually uh, creating articles or citations for existing articles, what sort of um, can you accomplish in a workshop? Um, we generally looked to do, we started off trying to do full weekend workshops and then we found that was probably asking a bit too much of people's time. Um, and we found really that if you worked one on one, so we tried to have an experienced editor working with a single workshop participant who'd never done it before. Um, a couple of hours is plenty to teach people to teach them the basics and they can either create articles or they definitely can edit articles. You can edit articles after 15 minutes of instruction really. Um, so the goal was to have people go out of the workshop feeling that yes I can do this and I'm not afraid of doing it and I understand the principles and I understand and so you know we created a, a profile for them to begin with so they weren't anonymous editors. 
Um, and so they become part of the community rather than just coming in anonymously. And then we also wanted to, them to go away from the workshop feeling that they had the support of our community, like our particular group. So remotely they could still... Yes. Yep, and yep. And that they had people they could email or contact yeah, for, for would, support. That person contact is important. Um, yeah. My question was sort of around equity. Um, you touched on that with the languages. Um, what Besides oral histories, are there um, uh, what, what sort of ways do people get around adding, yes, not making something knowledge that is not necessarily um, published on a website or in a book? If it's a if it's information that's shared through um, indigenous communities or something like that, uh, what's it, the work being done around that? It's a big challenge. Basically, it it um, and it is one of the big topics. You know, that's facing the movement because, um, you know, yes, they're basically incompatible. The you know the the two um, two ways of working. Um, when you say get around that, you know, there are organisations where, um, so a state library, for instance, might publish a blog about something, and that will be recognised in an area where there's very few sources that may be recognised as something that can then be referenced. But if you know, Paralympics Australia wrote their own blog about their own organisation, that wouldn't be considered um, appropriate. So, so that's one side of it. But yes, we're going to, you know, maybe there are things that aren't encyclopedias. That's, you know, there are all these other projects. There's Wikisource, which can take um, original um, material. Uh, there's Wikiversity, which can uh, take material for education. Uh, but I don't know if you've, you know, given any thought. Yeah, I'd to say this. in general, Wikipedia is uh, a place for secondary. It's a mm. secondary source. So, yes, we need primary information to cover those oral, whether mm. it's by oral history. Once it's there, we can refer as much mm. as we like and go yeah. for it. Maybe it's um, about creating those primary sources. Correct. Yeah, mm. which is except Wikisource yeah. <laughs> is not really inside. I don't know whether... So, Miley, did you yeah. want to say anything about that? Well, actually, I was thinking because we're here at UTS, you've got all these fabulous people working in the Jungana yeah. area. And so I think it's actually about finding publications that these people are putting out who will actually have some fabulous material to work with. Um, I do a lot of editing around the, um, these sorts of topics in consultation <coughs> with the Indigenous Engagement Team at the State Library. Um, and one of the things that I know is we see is a lot of information about the history since colonial times around things like Aboriginal reserves, Aboriginal missions, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of scope there. Um, and I think once we can identify the sources um, and work in consultation with people, um, it, there's a lot that's possible. But definitely important to, to talk to people about it as we go along, not just Come in, Do yes. it over again, another white version. Exactly. <laughs> and we've, uh, Wikimedia Australia has just actually published a policy, especially around the Indi um, Year of Indigenous Languages, that, um, yes, definitely it's a major priority that we improve the content um, around Indigenous languages and um, you know, Australian um, peoples in consultation. So, you know, we're not going to go out and support projects where some one comes in and um, you know makes the decision without consultation. So it's yeah, it's you've right, you know tick for the <laughs> the uh, the hardest question of the day. <laughs> okay, I think we had a couple of questions at the front here. You sir with the glasses first, maybe. Okay. Uh, the power of human editors and the bias. Uh, thank you very much for pointing that uh, data data philosophy that needs to complete. I'll uh, look after integrity and I have a matrix of contributing different languages. Uh, I always look at Wikipedia or I'll, I'll start looking at Wikidata in different languages and you can see lots of biased people mm. looking from different perspectives. So even if the people are looking like checking the thing but it's always biased mm -hmm. for that for that particular population. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like initiative to actually start looking at the integrity of this data? Because 
you can't delete that because there's a history. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see sometimes how people actually corrupt the data, and you can mm -hmm. see the history how something was better integrated and deteriorates over, over the time because they forget that there are other languages. They don't know other languages, so they can start actually mm -hmm. going sort of outside of the. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's a similar question to the first one, um, but I'll, I'll add one extra thing. So in the Wikidata space, there's another way of maintaining integrity, which is called constraints. So if you say, go to the item about UTS and say, I'm going to add a new fact. The new fact is that uh, UTS has a prime factor of seven. <laughs> that's wrong and corrupt. <laughs> But we can check that that's wrong and corrupt on a massive scale very quickly because all prime factors must be associated with items about integers, not about universities, right? So there's, there's a lot of constraints you can f feed in like that that very quickly scan for egregious errors and potentially even more subtle errors if you're careful. And, and very quick, sorry yeah. for the sub-question. Sub is, is there something done to actually to bring all this information from different languages into sort of one sort of usable uh, structure? Because that, you know, you can, if you merge that thing with, with some sort of unifying language, which is Esperanto. Is uh, <laughs> Esperanto? You, you've got a bias here. It, it, it's, no, it's not bias. It's, it's the first language in the world based on that there's no finance. It is the most active community. But there the is a very strong uh, Esperanto <laughs> Wikipedia movement, um, and um, and Wikidata is the one that's trying to say you know there is a concept, and it doesn't matter what language that's the concept we're interested in. Yes, yes, some sometimes we're interested in the linguistics, but mostly we're interested in the you know the concept. So here's the concept. The item is Q143. We don't care what you want to call it. Right. You can use whatever language you want yeah, because we. Right. We will show every language version of this concept. Mm -hmm. And when an editor comes in to link... Uh, so they want to put a fact... Of, oh, let's keep going, right? Where's a fact <laughs> about example. it? We're finding up. Here's, here's some facts, right? This is a fact. It's an instance of a planned language. But if I view that in English, I see instance of planned language. If I view that in French or Esperanto, you'll see... <laughs> I'm waiting for the translation. But... Uh, but uh, some translation, some translation, because the because on this item it already knows what the Esperanto for planned language is, and so it'll it'll yeah, just it connect. It. So th so this one will work in whatever language so, you'd so like. So that's basically an ontology, isn't it? I'm not that Possibly. kind of person, there's but yeah, project, <laughs> yeah, probably. There's a big project called Lexemes, which is basically you know um, Are there another whole part. Clone, clone different languages to another one where you build bring that structure and then later it's not my area sorry okay. <laughs> I don't know sorry. but can sorry. I just can I respond to the first part of that yes, about yes, the yes. bias now you know there's the bias in history wiki data in, in terms of Australian sets is taking stuff from Australian Bureau of Statistics or uh, t you know um, higher education whatever you know wherever it can get its data and um, but one thing that you can do to maybe reduce bias is actually to take shorter ranges of that data. So the whole data set might be in there, but if there's historical data that has entrenched bias in that because of the historical nature, something like this, you can set the time period that you want to um, use and, and you know, it, that can help in some of those kind of things. So um, I don't know, it'd be interesting to so run the, your uh, so publications the movie, data. The movie and publication data was all since 2010, so it's current oh, bias, okay. if I it's can that way. Okay. But it might be even worse. If oh, we sure, <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> to look. You can use the same query, adapt it, just change the dates, you'll get whatever answers you want. <laughs> okay. Oh, we had a question here at the front, and then we'll have the, the gentleman there. Okay, uh, you've described the processes for dealing with contested data. And I'm interested not so much in the processes, but the values that sit behind the judgments that are made. So you get data from the Bureau of Meteorology. A climate denier would dispute that data. So you have to make a judgment as to which is the better uh, kind of data to put into. Yeah. What kind of values does that process represent? 
Are you nice, liberal, bourgeois people? Or are you, you got a harder cutting edge than that? We're meant to be neutral. Okay, so that's an impossibility, but that's what you know. That's what we would say. So you've picked you've picked on the second of our values. We, we, yes, there's five, these are the right. pillars, so-called pillars, and in in some sense, we try to yeah. um, argue toward these. The best, uh, a good recent illustration is the newspaper project that Toby was talking about. And so somebody wants to go in and say these are good newspapers, and they or, or not even that. Sorry, they want to say these are left leaning, these are right leaning newspapers and there's an argument well you know who's going to do that classification and um, you know the answer was well you need to go and um, actually work out you know how what proportion of articles in, in an election campaign this newspaper supported which side put the table don't make the thing yourself put the tables there so the original source material so that other people can make up their mind now that's a pretty extreme Example, but um, you know it has to be based on the best information that we have, and that's where the arguments come. So there's kind of this theory that it's not necessarily who's right or uh, wrong; it's who has the best sources, which is again mm-hmm. not helpful. But but that's really what we're meant to be coming out of that kind of scientific value background. I think. Did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking at it from a like a, a relatively non-technical perspective, Wikipedia can be really bitchy. Like mm-hmm. seriously, behind the articles, if there's any controversy at all, there's a community that has extremely robust discussion. And for new editors going in, one of the things that we've found mm-hmm. is it can be really intimidating because they'll make a change and someone who disagrees with it will just wipe it and then make some comment back to them that's really full on. And so a new editor who comes in there and is trying to do the right thing and they step on someone else's toes, they can be dealt with really harshly. And that's one of the issues I think that that Wikipedia has to address still is that it can be a fairly hostile environment if you're not... if you're new in particular and you're not established. Um, And so people just sort of walk into that environment quite wide-eyed and can be hit with a with a fairly tough response, um, and that that for us has been one of the issues to get over with new contributors. We found new contributors who just get completely freaked by that, yeah. and you have to warn them when they come into it that this is actually part of the community that you're coming into. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't quite answer your question, but um, <laughs> it, you know it is the underlying um, value there, and I think perhaps one of the discussions that's happening now is. Recognising that neutrality is is not um, necessarily achievable, and how we um, how we work with that. There's a difference, of course, between neutrality and objectivity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had the gentleman over there, and then the gentleman here. Oh, I'll be quick. Um, I work with data. Looks like you guys are working with data too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what kind of queries, like, just I'm just curious as to the actual mechanics of using this as a resource? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. What Sparkle. language? Or, mm-hmm. yeah. So the, the standard query language is Sparkle, but you can download the entire thing and do what you want. But uh, yeah, th- these queries I've shown you are Sparkle queries. Do you want to show the interface just for people who are into sure. the data? So <laughs> the thing that generated this ah, is a complicated one. I'll get a simpler one. Um, I store a bunch of standard queries here just so, okay, so if you want to see information about power plants in Australia, then uh, this is what the query, oh, sorry, the query looks like. On the left is a bunch, a way of doing it visually and yeah. drop down menu. I, I don't use that. I, I actually. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I actually. Go straight for the spot. <laughs> go straight, straight for this because I, I, I find that it sometimes can't do what. I need, but anyway, so each line we're finding a power station. We're saying it's situated in a country, and then or in the administrative district, which is within the country, and so on, so on. So you basically ask what you want. You can filter. Um, you can ask for stuff that Wikidata might not know. It might not. It might have an image. It might not have an image. If it's got an image, let's grab it. And so then we run that query which is run on an external server somewhere that is, allows you 30 seconds of its time anytime you like. And, um, and then you get a list of power 
power plants in Australia with all the details you asked for, or if you want to change to a map, you can do that and see where they all are and filter according to whatever you want to filter. So that's what it looks like. Um, that's for asking questions of a database. The, the syllabus thing I showed you before is interacting directly via JavaScript, basically API calls. Um, yeah, I was going to say, the, yeah, say okay. you're a Python coder or not. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's there. I, I'm not good at it, but uh, it's available. Yeah. There, there are both R and Python and this is an area of the community, you know, traditionally we've had very word-oriented people who know the encyclopedia, um, we, and so we have contacts in that space and we can <coughs> usually put someone in touch with someone to, um, to write things. We don't have many people and we're kind of overloading people like Toby and a few other people um, when we want to get data out. So, you know, this is another way that people can get in there and um, tell the stories and that... Let us know you exist and you're interested in this so we can put people in touch with you. Hi, this gentleman here. Yeah. To what extent, I'm sorry, Wikidata is new to me and it sounds <laughs> interesting. Mm. Um, I'll go and have a play with it. To what extent do Australian or international governments and Australian governments, mm. locals, state, federal, do they contribute data directly or is it all, got, is it all put into Wikidata by volunteers like yourself? Certainly they don't put it in, but... The more they can do about releasing it under open licenses, the more we can t take from them and put into this general database. So it really depends on their license. Uh, a lot of Australian organisations, government organisations that are currently CCBY, so they need attribution, which doesn't necessarily work in Wikidata. It does work on Wikipedia, um, so one of the things I do is advocate for better open sources sometimes I'm scraping public websites, sometimes they do publish a, a little list of at least of their identifiers remember I said hashtag person or hashtag um, molecule what they call the item is what I most care about uh, to match it into the network and so, so those identifiers are uh, I don't consider copyrightable things, so I'm, I freely take identifiers. If they've got data, then then that they may be tying it up. They may be tying our hands unless they can license with a better license. Because it seems yeah. governments, um, I can only speak locally, but governments are trying to put more of their data online. Mm. In UK, yeah, you know, it's really doing that. But it sounds like they haven't really gone and put it into the the central. Uh, repository of all global information yet. Ah. Which well, that's very complimentary <laughs> of you. <laughs> there yeah. is a process. Uh, so, um, if someone wants a data set, then uh, they make a proposal and it goes for peer review, basically. You know, check that the constraints are sensible, that, you know, that it's going to be useful, what, you know, it's achievable. And, and um, people vote on it, support it, or reject it, or ask for clarification. Um, and then volunteers, it gets added and it gets its code and, and that kind of thing and then people start working with it. So, you know, if you are aware of data that would be useful, um, you know, again, ask somebody like Toby to put up a proposal or go in there and propose it yourself. And then presumably, sorry, just one more, it's, mm. it's a one-time pull of that information, it's not a live connection to wherever the, the source data resides, is it? Correct. It's a one-time pull, but if we're pulling the identifier... Mm -hmm. So here's an example of um, a government website which has all the legislation in it, and this, these are their identifiers. They're in the URL, which means that if I can get that identifier onto the item about the Aboriginal Land Rights Act... So here's, here's the Wikidata item. Mm -hmm. uh, down here somewhere I put the identifier... Maybe... Oh, man. <laughs> OK. Uh, Somewhere down here, we put the original identifier, and that links to the live data. If their data changes, then we'll at least be able to go in because that string is part of their URL, which is nice, and so we can get straight there. Straight there, as a human going click to read it? it or as in click as it, you can see it. Okay. Fine. Yeah. yeah. But or, or a computer if you want. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, any more questions? Oh, they're all coming out now. <laughs> so... Um, this 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 gentleman and this lady, please. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go? Okay. I was just asking how you see what data sets are already there. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, there's a very long list. There mm-hmm. is a thing of all the data sets that are in Wikidata. Data sets? Yeah, oh, a whole yeah. database. The catalogue. Oh, okay. What I, what I would do is look at um, an item that is, mm-hmm. is part of that set mm-hmm. and see whether on that item... Oh, sorry, not common law. So if I go to the... So have you got an area of interest? Um, oh, yeah, so that's how Library of Congress or something, it's a data set that you're quoting. Yeah, so, so we haven't... We've got, say, the trove um, yeah, people, yeah. The, the party identifier is in there, yeah. but they're not all matched. Um, so, you know, the property is there, but um, the data set... Um, yeah. We don't want duplicates, so we're very careful about not doing wholesale dump somebody some human or you know well-trained bot goes through and does the matching in a, a game called yeah we, match. yeah I, we can talk about how to do that if you want to import whole data sets but yeah in general if you want to find out what's already linked go to an item that would be in your data set go down find what identifiers there already are and those two the common law id and the austlit id are, are the two law databases we have so far from australian content so one of the ones, for instance, that um, I've worked on is My School. So all schools in Australia um, are linked through the My School website. We have the ID, but if there's an article in Wikipedia already about a school, then that can match. But otherwise, we really uh, need somebody to cite because you know how many St Mary's there are or, you know, whatever. You need to be sure that you've got the right school. So there's a, a school which just has one identifier, which is, mm. yeah, I, I, uh, the, if, uh, no, long story, don't worry. Yeah, it is. We won't go there. So my, my question was somewhat similar, but it was about completeness. So you mentioned, mm. I think, in the chemistry example, you had some okay, so we'll percent from some <laughs> That's what I was going to, yeah. From others. All right. Is there any program in Wikimedia to finish those references? So for it identify a source where you've got 98% of them matched and can you have like a project to finish the last 2% because completeness is just so... <laughs> this is your set. Anyone can have any project but you, you know, if I want this to be complete either I have to do some work <laughs> or I have to do some work getting some other people to do some work. <laughs> yeah. So yes, there's, there, there are no... There's no priority other than what the community says is a priority. So, you know, if at the moment there's not a lot of Australians working on Australian data sets and some of them are pretty large, say, for instance, there was some major thing that happened where this data became really useful, then, you know, everyone would move off chemistry and onto schools and get it finished. Um, But at the moment, a lot of us just play in the space that, is immediately so there for example is, is a whole lot of uh, geographic data sets we've uh, uploaded into a sort of parallel thing which just keeps track of where we're up to and so if you wanted this to tick something off you'd go for this but if you want something australian you might go to this and where you, you know you can you can choose what yeah so there are things this this tool is called mix and match right. last question that's for pressure reduction. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be a rubbish one. It's going to be a good one. Does anybody have a question? Oh. <laughs> Go on. What, is there a published ontology? You know, like how does something become an item in Wikidata? Can anything be an item? So it's just one class? Um, it becomes a new item when someone clicks create a new item. So an event, or, you've got no... Or no. When, a, oh. when a robot does this thing. There's, but, yeah, the, there is meant to be some notability. It, it's very different. You know, the notability criteria in Wikipedia is very well um, worked out. Um, in Wikidata at the moment, it's... Free for all, It almost. is free for all. Yeah. Um, it would be... Well, yes, but the, the, the bar the is bar much is. lower. Yeah. Um, and, for, and it depends on a project. So there's projects at the moment that are trying to get um, all of the published um, academic literature uh, into Wikisite um, and a thing called Scolia, which is like a um, citations you know, database. And so in that way, anyone who's published anything is notable enough to be there. So any book, any journal, that kind of thing. Um, whereas, you know, 
someone else might have a photography project that says anything can can go in. So um, it's it's very you know I would, it's new and it's growing and that's the way Wikipedia and other projects have all worked. I suspect you know if we were here in two years' time, we might say there's a lot more rules and um, mm. specifications because there's going to be a lot more writing on it as more and more people um, adopt it. It's a bit like Wikipedia. You know we we want it to be trustworthy, therefore we've screwed down some of the. Um, um, rules. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, do you three speakers have any pleas or <laughs> requests of our audience that whilst you've got them here? I've pitched mine already. So <laughs> <laughs> come and talk. And Toby and uh, Tony are both local, so that's that's really good. I'm I'm a South Australian um, currently in Victoria, but obviously you know happy to You're connect. In New South Wales. Sorry, no, but I, I live in Victoria <laughs> and I'm now in New South Wales, so I'm kind of a few resi- um, removed. But what I you know we can connect you into the community. I would say New South Wales, I've, you know whether it's geography, what it is, but there are less. Um, at the moment face-to-face events for people which um, is not a problem because it's it's an online project but sometimes those um, activities bring people together but if I can give a plug there is a conference planned at the University of Sydney in uh, June so um, on your channel we might um, put some stuff out so because it just means it's a good way to come together and make some contacts and um, have a a, um, point of asking questions because as Tony said it can be daunting to go online and suddenly find yourself in the middle of an argument you didn't know you were getting into but we are humans join join Wikimedia Australia (laughs) yes that's right (laughs) I'm not on the committee but I I recommend it it's $10 a year and it's really just you know so that we know who you are because you can be totally anonymous if you want to online uh, in in Wikipedia Uh, so we you know and we respect privacy um, and very strongly, so you need to give us your details. <laughs> okay. Please join me in thanking our speaker.